Welcome to America's Healer with Dr. Jason West. Dr. West and his guest experts are about to open your eyes to a whole new perspective on the medical world. Now, here is your host, world-renowned Dr. Jason West. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Jason West and welcome to America's Healer. I'm so excited to share with you our program of what we've got organized today. And that includes things like loose ligaments, what to do for chronic sprained ankles, chronic shoulder problems. What are we going to do with healthy fats and how they protect your nerves? Also, natural treatments for heart, for stomach problems, lung disease, and a particularly challenging case, which is what to do for vertigo. Now, throughout the show, we're going to be providing actionable steps that you can take to improve your health and encourage you to visit americashealer.com and evaluate your health and to receive my free ebook, Why We Get Sick and What to Do About It. So that's over at americashealer.com. Of course, I would really like to thank my sponsors, and the sponsors of the segment are the West Clinic, this in the beautiful little railroad town in Pocatello, Idaho, where we change lives every single day. A special shout out to the patients that have been coming there for 107 years. I love going to my office and I love working with patients. Number two, we want to thank Personalized NX. This is a company that makes professional high quality supplements that we talk about and also the doctor's training program that's a part of this called Henry Skill, where we can reach, teach, and influence other healthcare providers to have similar outcomes that we've been able to do over the last century. So without further considerations, you guys, let's jump into looking at what we can do for ligaments and ligament health. Now, the purpose of ligaments is to stabilize bones. They, they're like guide wires. They go from one bone to the other. And have you ever wondered why once you start hurting a joint, like your ankle, you sprain it, and then you keep spraining it? And so literally what a ligament is, is it stabilizes bones across a joint. It's not a muscle. It's not a tendon. It's not a shock absorber like meniscus. It's not a cartilage that the bones are going to rub up against. A ligament is a fibrous connective tissue that attaches bone to bones and usually serves to hold the structures together and to keep them stable. So when a ligament gets stretched, it's literally like having rubber bands that you have pulled all the way apart and then they don't come back together. And the reason they don't go back to their original size. And the reason why is because they've lost that tensile strength. And so when the ligaments become loose, they're not stable and re-injuries occur and we call them lax or loose ligaments. And by the way, it's not just always in ankles. It's not in shoulders. Another area that gets really loose and lax is the lumbar spine and that you have connective tissues back there you've got the lumbosacral ligament is one you've got the cervical ligaments another but you also have these ligaments known as discs and the disc literally are those shock absorbers in between the vertebrae and if you go and lift something really heavy a couch or a fridge while you're helping a, a friend move if you lift and twist if you're twisting like swinging a golf club or lifting a hay bale, you can really stretch those ligaments and this leads to joint instability and you can't properly, the ligament can't function to hold the bones together and ligament laxity causes a misalignment or dislocation of the joint. And then what happens is you can have those bones, there's a sensitive structure that grows around each bone called the periosteum. And when the periosteum touches each other, it doesn't feel good. That's that shutoff response that you get when you have bone on bone arthritis. Well, it can happen with trauma. And fortunately, there's some amazing breakthroughs that really help with bone on bone arthritis and ligament injury. Um, there's some important facts to know about ligaments is that they're notoriously slow healers, especially if they don't have the building blocks, one, a mineral, and two, something called collagen. And so a lot of times patients will get frustrated and saying, hey, you know, I had a tendon problem or I had a pulled muscle, it healed pretty fast. How come this ligament isn't healing? Well, it could be normal for six weeks for a muscle to heal, but this is not 
consistent with ligaments, the literature is showing it can take up to two years for a heal. And also some considerations that if you severely injure the ligament, you can lose 50% of its strength by six months, 80% after a year. And if you don't do the proper rehab and treatment, you can literally lose almost 100% of the, the, the strength of that ligament in one to three years. So this is an example of what can happen when you have tissues that aren't as organized as they're not as rehabilitated as they should be. So let's talk about some ways to speed up ligament healing. And here is a checklist that I like to tell people. One, water, water, water. We talk about it every single week, but it's so important for ligament health, getting enough water into the system. A good place to start is at least 60 ounces. Even better is to push it towards 100. That's so good. The other thing is reduce your inflammatory foods. Primarily synthetic white sugar, in my opinion, is so inflammatory. And then using advanced nutritional therapy, collagen peptides, that's one really important one. Some minerals, magnesium, manganese, zinc, selenium are all really important. And then using biomechanical alignment, massage therapy, touch therapy, physical therapy, for the, for the muscles and the rehab and the posture patterns and then chiropractic therapy for really helping line everything up on a bone and then some considerations for regenerative injection therapy in the, li in the ligaments and those are things like prolotherapy, prolozone, neural prolotherapy, perineural injection therapy are all considerations. And so if you have a ligament problem, Let's make sure that we are addressing it the right way. And, and I think the number one thing to do for ligaments is to put those building blocks into the system. And that's using the right minerals, using collagen peptides, and making sure that you have the vitamins and minerals, phytonutrients inside of your diet. Now, if you'd like more information about this information, just go over to americashealer.com. We have an evaluation over there. We also have a wonderful ebook called Why We Get Sick and What to Do About It. And we have a section in there about ligaments. So in our show today, we wanted to give people information on a multitude of different things. Like we wanted to check out what we can do for ligaments. We also wanted to do something that's really important for ligaments and how to ligaments to heal. And that is what we can do for healthy fats. Now, what are fats? Fats are literally the kind of like the, for the Tin Man or the Wizard of Oz, it's really, really healthy to have fats in your system, but it has to be the right fats. If you get wrong fats in your system, bad things are going to happen. So let's start talking about in this segment what we can do for fats and what is a function of fats. And I'm not talking about margarine. I'm not talking about solidified or saturated fats. I'm not talking about pizza fat or French fry fat, and particularly the seed oils, which I'm really down on. I think that seed oils are the number way, one way to be unhealthy. So the importance of fats is, number one, to protect the cells. So each cell has a phospholipid bilayer, and what you want to have around that is to make sure that you have healthy fats. The fats protect the, protect the nerves, so especially the peripheral nerves and also the brain and the central nervous system. They lubricate the body. They provide hormone structure and they maintain the skin integrity. And these are the five things I've listed, but I'm also just recognizing that the other thing is, is they're a really good source of fuel. Start thinking about the keto diet and what you can do for sustained energy. And of course, in the wintertime, fats are really important for warmth. And so the diseases and conditions associated with a lack of fat are things like brain fog and dementia, nerve tingling or nerve neuropathy. I think there's muscle cramps and fasciculations. It affects your eye health, you know, for macular degeneration, both wet and dry. Every hormone has to have a cholesterol or fat center in order you can build. It's kind of like having plywood, sheet rock, and two by fours. And then, of course, fats are really, really important for skin health. 
So when people say, hey, Dr. West, what's a good source of fats? One of the first things that I recommend or I tell them is I love homemade chicken noodle soup because you're getting the fats out of the bone marrow and out of the skin of the chicken. Remember, that's a lot of where chickens use their skin literally like people use kidneys. And there's healthy fats in the skin. there. Now, there's also bad fats over there, but I love extracting healthy fats through chicken noodle soup. It has electrides in it, has sodium, potassium, zinc, and vitamin A. And if we just start going through that, sodium and potassium are so important for nerve conductivity. Like as the nerve impulse goes from, like if you stub your finger or you or your toe, how you get that connection up to your brain is something called saltatory conduction. And the nerve impulse literally jumps from junction to junction to junction. And you have to have the right combination of sodium and potassium to do that. Now, too much potassium is really hard on your heart. Too much sodium is really hard on your blood pressure. Not enough sodium, not enough potassium. You're not going to have improper nerve conduction. And also, you're going to have muscle cramps. And then the other component of fats from chicken noodle soup is magnesium. And magnesium is the miracle mineral. It's a cofactor for 300 enzymatic reactions. It helps to re relax the endothelial layer in your cardiovascular system. It's so important to get things to relax. And then zinc helps with hormone formation, helps with estrogen and testosterone. But it's also really important for your immune system and your energy and vitality. And then an enormous part of chicken noodle soup is vitamin A, which helps to lubricate your mucous membranes. It helps to, to make it so that you see better. And then vitamin C which is electron donor, literally vitamin C donates energy to the body. Another consideration for healthy fats, and this is one of the, the myths or frustrations that I see in practice is when people come in and say, particularly it, it seems to be with women, they'll say, well, I stopped eating fat because I don't want to get fat. So it's clever marketing to say that low-fat foods cause or, or excuse me, low-fat foods make you lose weight, but the science isn't behind it, particularly the biochemistry. And so when people are saying, what else can I do for healthy fats? So you have raw nuts, uh, avocados, I think are, are a really good source of fats. I like pure, unprocessed virgin olive oil. I'm a fan of coconut oil, but I really like animal fats, uh, particularly beef bone broth. So we, again, we're hammering the minerals you get your fatty acids. It's a great source of manganese, which helps joint health and sleep aid, and it's really good for weight loss. Avocados have healthy fats. About 80% of the content is fat. It's healthy for your digestion. It's really good for your GI system. It helps with your heart health, and it's a good source of cholesterol. Now, I don't want people to abuse this, but another consideration for healthy fats is dark chocolate. Not only does it help with the fats, but it has fiber in it. It has magnesium. It has resveratrol. It's really good for sugar cravings. You know, I think that with sugar cravings, one of the things that we see with people that have sugar cravings is they're deficient in their minerals and their essentially fatty acids. And so what happens is their body says, hey, you got to go out and you got to find something uh, to satisfy this need. So they go out and they're looking for different cravings. The other consideration for healthy fats to protect your nerves and protect against neuropathy and really important for dementia is whole eggs. I really believe that they don't have any cholesterol impact. They're full of lecithin, which is a really healthy substance for the body. Choline helps to emulsify and break down fats in the GI system, and I think they're helpful for maintaining weight. Now, if you have a lot of weight, I think it helps you to lose weight. If you're underweight, I think it helps you to gain the healthy weight. I'm a really big fan of eggs. The only reason I tell people not to eat it is obviously for a food allergy. And then we move into the fish family. So herring, cold processed fish like salmon are considerations. I kind of like to stay away from bottom dwelling stuff. I'm not a super big fan of crabs, lobsters, and halibut, not because they don't taste good, but because I think that that's where a lot of the poisons of the ocean go. 
So fish like wild caught salmon has healthy omega threes. It's a quality protein. We know that the literature is showing that's really healthy for cognitive function and it decreases heart risk. Nuts are a really good source of healthy fats. They give fiber, plant source protein, vitamin E, which I always tell everybody, look, I, I tell, say that vitamin C is my favorite and then vitamin A is my second and vitamin E is my second and vitamin D3 is my second. But vitamin E is such an amazing vitamin as a lubricant for too many red blood cells or sticky blood. It's also a sex steroid precursor. Nuts have a healthy source of vitamin D and they've been shown to really help with type 2 diabetes, both prevention and treatment. Chia seeds are another good consideration because they have so many carbs or their fiber, so you're not breaking it down as a carbohydrate or calorie source. They have alpha linoleic acid in it, which protects the, protects the liver and protects the cells. And then the last part, in the little time that we have left in the segment, full fat yogurt as a fermented food with probiotics, improves digestion, weight management, and has minimal sugar intake. In our next section, we're going to talk about how to sleep better. This is America's Healer with Dr. Jason West, and we're going to see you guys in segment two. You are listening to America's Healer with Dr. Jason West. If you have a question for Dr. West or his guests, feel free to join us on the show at 866-472-5792. That's 866-472-5792. Now, back to the show. All right, you guys, welcome back to America's Healer. I'm Dr. Jason West. I'm so excited to share this segment with you. As I told you in the first segment, or we we recap the first segment, it was all about how to help loose ligaments with collagens, magnesium, and manganese. The second thing we wanted to talk about is where you can get resources and where you can get resources at americashealer.com. You can also get our free book over there, Why We Get Sick and What to Do About It. And also, we want to talk about healthy fats. And the right kind of fats. Now, I didn't mention this in the segment before, but fats really protect red blood cells and membranes. And it's the right kind of fats. Avocados, raw nuts. I'm a big fan of chicken noodle soup and beef broth. I also think legs has, excuse me, eggs has some choline and some lecithin in it. And there's an, a really neat multi-fat supplement that is my favorite called Ultimate Omega. You can pick it up at personalizednx.com. If you want to save money and have something really effective for healthy fats, go to personalizednx.com and look at Ultimate Omega. It's a combination of three, six, nines, and 12 uh, cholesterol, essential fatty acids, and everything else. And it's, it's instead of having to take omega-3s, and then DHEA and GLA and EPA. You can all have it in one formula. So I want to post the link inside of the show notes if you need that. Also wanted to just tell everybody you can get a free evaluation, my free ebook at americashealer.com. And let's stop into the next segment. And the next segment is how you can really help heal with sleep. Now, sleep is so overrated and underrated. So I got to qualify both of those. Overrated is when people abuse it and sleep too much, but also it's underrated when people aren't sleeping enough. So it's kind of like blood sugar. Too high is really bad. Too low is really bad. You want to have just the right amount. And, and as looking at my show notes, you know, going back to Henry the fourth part two, a Shakespeare poem. Poem, O Sleep, O Gentle Sleep, Nature's Soft Nurse. And that's exactly what it is, is sleep is such an important factor and having the right amount of sleep. And, and there's so many different things that we can do to help sleep and have a sleeping sanctuary. According to the award-winning author Bill Bryson's book, The Body, no one knows exactly why we sleep, but the purpose of sleep is to consolidate memories, to reset the immune system, to restore hormone balance, 
and clear metabolic waste and neurotoxins. Science really doesn't know exactly why we need it so much, but we have to have it. And it's vital to every living creature. Everything's related to sleep. You'd be hard pressed to find any part of the body, metabolic pathway, any electron transport chain, any hormone pathway, any immune system pathway that isn't affected by sleep. So the advantages of sleep is good sleep reduces stress, better immune system, lower blood pressure, and better mood. But sleep is perhaps the most important for the normal functioning of our brains and is highly correlated to mental as well as physical health. So inadequate sleep, it's reported that a person is 10 times more likely to experience depression and 17 times more likely to experience of, of anxiety if they're not getting sleep. And a growing body of research suggests that poor sleep raises the risk for suicidal behavior independent of any other mental health problems. So not having a right sleep, cyclic mood disorders, suicidal tendencies, and it has an enormous effect on your moods. But despite of this, sleep is not really thought as a first line of defense for a lot of types of healthcare providers, whether it's chronic or episodic. And this may be partly due to the fact that physicians only get a few hours of sleep education during medical school and not really enough sleep themselves. And so better sleep helps with literally just about everything. Studies have found that better sleep um, helps with both insomnia and anxiety, insomnia and depression, and just the insomnia, if it gets treated, anxiety and the depression will get better. Sleep is an essential biologic function with treatment approaches available, a potentially modifiable way to address mental health conditions and reduce suicidal behavior. So why good sleep matters? It's essential. It's just like vitamin C. It's just like having enough food. It's just like having enough water and, and good mental and, and physical environment. You gotta, gotta, gotta have sleep. So first of all, Sleep should be sufficient and needs vary by age. Second, sleep should get consistent and get up at the same time. I think that's the most important thing is to getting up at the same time. And third, sleep should be restorative. You should get high-quality sleep that makes you feel rested upon awakening. Now, I know there's a lot of variables in there about stress, about kids, about shift work. But the, I also want to state that sleep is not always good if you do too much. It's important to note that too much sleep is problematic and is unhealthy. One study that found that less than five hours is really bad for you and more than nine hours in adults is associated with an increase in psychiatric and substance use disorders as well as suicide attempt. So a little is good, a lot is not better. And the first part of it is just trying to identify, I think that six to eight hours if a night regular schedule, our body develops a cycle through the four stages of sleep four to five times each night. And the first stage is characterized by actually falling asleep and which takes about eight to 20 minutes. And in the second stage, what happens is our sleep is shallow. And we can be easily awakened or startled by external stimuli. And then the second stage lasts about 20 minutes when we fall into a light restorative slumber, not unlike a nap. And sleep in the third stage is the awakenings or when arousals are rare. That's where you get really healthy, rapid eye movement sleep, which is the lighter stage of sleep, but it's also characterized by dreaming. It's pretty normal to wake it a few times at night, and the sleep can be sufficient if those periods are short. But if our sleep is restricted or length or fragmented in schedule, our bodies do not benefit from four to five cycles through the sleep stage. And all of these stages are important. So when we feel sleepier, when we awaken each day, it's governed by our personal circadian rhythm and habits, and they're different from person to person. But those circadian rhythms are regulated by your genes as well as the amount of light our brains detect. So this is why it's so important. I talk about this all the time, is you want to get to a sleep sanctuary where there's no LED light, there's no a red alarm clock light. There's no light coming off the TV. There's no light coming off of your iPad or your tablet or your smartphone because the nerve receptors in our eyes that act on brightness, and it functions even in blind people, 
They're detected by the cells, which goes to the pineal gland, which secretes melatonin. And everybody thinks that melatonin is just specifically for sleep. And it's a huge part of that, but it also regulates the immune system. Our circadian rhythm is basically a 24-hour clock that guides our sleep cycles and regulates body functions, hormone release, and activities of our organs. And so what's the best way to get a good night's sleep? Well, it's literally using these steps. Like number one, I think the first good step to getting a good night's sleep is to get your alarm or get your body set up to wake in at the same time every day. And I think this is important on the weekends. I have so many students that come in and say, look, I don't want to, you know, go to bed at nine o'clock because I'm such a prude. You can't have any fun. Okay, look, I don't have any issues that I went to college for 10 years. I know exactly what happens when, when the weekends come. But I do think it's really important to get up at the same time, regardless of what time you go to bed on Friday or Saturday night, get up, move around, do something, and then take a nap and repay your sleep deficit. I think that as much as possible, if you can do that, even in shift work, which I've done shift work as well. Matter of fact, to this day, it's 25, 26 years since I worked at United Parcel Service doing the, the graveyard night shift and loading trucks. And that's how I put myself through college and how I supported my wife and my kids when I was going to graduate school. And sometimes even now, I'll wake up really, really early and think, oh my gosh, I got to go load trucks. But I think it's important if you can get up at the same time on Saturday and on Sunday and then take a nap and pay your sleep deficit, your circadian rhythm will thank you and you can be in balance. Other things that are really important to consider, avoid stimulants such as caffeine, even foods or medications for at least three hours before bedtime. And remember that caffeine can last in your system six to eight hours. And I think it's really good to go to bed when you're, when you're tired and sleepy, recognizing you're going to get up at the same time. It's also important advice to avoid eating too close to bedtime as digestion slows down the sleep process and undigested food can cause indigestion. And, and so the diet matters. Alcohol affects sleep duration and certain foods can be sleep promoting. And there's also evidence that a good workout as, as few as 10 minutes before going to sleep can dramatically improve the quality of sleep and help stave off the development of sleep disorders such as sleep apnea and restless leg syndrome. And I'm also going to put the plug in this. For, you know, if you've seen us on our YouTube or our Facebook channel, like I think ice baths are enormously helpful before you go to sleep. Like it really helps to exercise that endothelial layer which is basically that muscle layer that goes around the 26,000 miles of, of circulation and blood vessels in your system. So getting a good night's sleep, you want to have a relaxing atmosphere. You want it to be dark and cool and quiet and have the same bedtime routine. And be careful with screens because screens can emit blue light, which mimics the sunlight and confuses our brightness detectors, interfering with melatonin production and pineal gland function. So reconsider alarm clock with a lighted time display. And this can cause unneeded anxiety about sleep that you might be missing out on. I think actually a mechanical clock or one of those clocks that gently puts light into the room are the best lights. So to summarize what's important about this, this show segment, America's Healer with Dr. Jason West, it's all body systems are affected by sleep. You want to get up at the same time. You want to have a relaxing atmosphere. You want to avoid energy production you want to when i say production energy production off of off the tv or the tablets or the smartphone and reminder to everybody that naps are okay naps are how you really help with sleep deficits now one of the best things that we've been able to discover in working this is from our sponsor personalized nutrition is to use something that has an amino acid called l-theanine and it's called sleep chewies and I love this. This is one of my favorite things that I found in 23 years of practice to promote quality and restful sleep by supporting the body natural ability to fall asleep and stay asleep while promoting the calming of brain activity. And it's a, a combination of vitamin B6, which is a natural anti-inflammatory. It also has some inositol, some 5-HTP, and some melatonin that helps in restful and rejuvenating sleep. So when we talk about sleep, if you can't sleep, you can't heal. Treatments that are helpful for sleep, taking time for yourself, journaling, 
doing body therapy, doing a nerve reboot of, of nerve therapy, acupuncture, you know, prescription if, is a last resort. Like I don't like prescription medications. I don't like over-the-counter medicines. I'm not opposed to them. I just want to use them as a last resort. So talking about what we can do to really help different conditions. Sleep literally helps about everything. It's kind of like water. It's really, really underrated until you don't have it. When you combine this with healthy fats, and what this is what we talked about for neuropathy and for macular degeneration and brain fog and hormone production. And then we also talking about how to get rid of pain. Pain is a thief of joy, and it's so significant and such an important part of health. That's why I wanted to put in this segment on how to recharge your body by having a sleep sanctuary. Now, on our website, americashealer.com, we also have an ebook, Why We Get Sick and What to Do About It. But we also have a report available in the book called 27 Secrets to Getting a Good Night's Sleep. And it's things of how to calm your mind down, especially when you're stressed. So if you have too much activity, doing meditation, doing rain meditation, counting backwards, counting sheep, like everybody's heard of those, but also making sure that we have less electromagnetic frequency radiation poisoning inside of your sleep sanctuary, which is really hard to get away from. And this is one of the reasons why social media is really you have to be careful with it because it really can set you up. It's addicting. Like you get on YouTube shorts or you go on to Facebook and then what happens? You look up and it's 90 minutes or it's two hours later. So you want to be careful with those things that stimulate too much, literally electrical activity in your brain. Grounding is really good where literally bare feet and walking in your garden, walking in the grass, I would even say it's worth it to do some outside walking in the snow, especially after going through all of the Iceman's literature, uh, Wim Hof, and talking about how the cold shock proteins are so important for health. So this is wrapping up segment two. I'm Dr. Jason West, America's Healer. Just as a reminder, all of the resources that we talk about, you can go pick up at americashealer.com. We're also happily sponsored by our sleep segment, Sleep Chewies by Personalized NX. You can pick up Sleep Chewies at personalnx.com. In the next segment, we're going to talk about vertigo. We're going to be talking about natural treatments for the heart and stomach. Stick around. It's Dr. Jason West, America's Healer on Voice America Radio. You're listening to America's Healer with Dr. Jason West. If you have a question for Dr. West or his guests, feel free to join us on the show at 866-472-5792. That's 866-472-5792. Now, back to the show. Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Jason West, America's Healer. Welcome back to the third and final segment. Like, we've done a whole bunch of things on this show. We've talked about what to do for loose ligaments how to have healthy fats in your system to protect your nerves and your brain function. And then we went into the middle segment. We talked about one of the most underrated things in health, which is your sleep sanctuary. And now we get to talk about some other fun stuff, natural treatments, what you can do for heart disease, which is so prevalent, what you can do for lungs to help breathe better, what we can do for stomach. And also we wanted to touch a little bit on vertigo. So we have a lot to go over in this segment, but it's going to be a really, really fun segment. So let's start talking about different conditions that we can do for, that, or different treatments that you can do for natural heart problems, because this is one of the biggest reasons why people feel unease. If your heart's off, it's the most important muscle in the body. It's the first muscle that shows response to stress, hormone inadequacy, nutritional inadequacy, and obviously a restriction of blood flow, which we call cardiovascular disease. It's sensitive to chemicals and poisons. And I think that it gives you an overall sense of well-being when this engine is working right. It's the most powerful source of electromagnetic in energy inside of the body. The heart's electrical field is about 60 times greater than the electrical activity generated by the brain. So I always say we're electrical systems. When your electricity's off, you're off. 
So we talked a lot about in the segment before about how sleep and sleep sanctuary helps with brain function. Now we're going to talk about the heart. The heart's energy is said to about three feet outside of the body. So what does that mean? You can sense or you can feel by other people and you can even pick it up with special type of evaluation equipment, but that energy pulse, that energy electrical thing comes out literally about 36 inches from the heart itself. Of course, it's the most important muscle in the body. Like you can get away with some of the other muscles in your arms or your legs not working very well. You can't get away if your heart doesn't work. And so things that really bother the heart are stress, which is stress is not a disease. It just makes everything worse. That's why in every live cast, Facebook, YouTube video, and radio show we do, we always are talking about what to do for stress. Going on a drive, talking to yourself, deep breathing exercises, reading, listening to music, playing a musical instrument, learning different things, memorizing themes, Sudoku puzzles, crossword puzzles are all really healthy outlets for stress. I think the heart is also the first muscle in the body that shows nutritional inadequacy. Um, I'm going to tell you a simple, easy test that you can do at home that really helps to evaluate your heart health, your heart rate, and also your hormone hormone test. It's called Raglan's test. And so the heart, when you're when it's off, everything is going to be off. It beats about a hundred thousand times per day. It literally is pumping out about two thousand gallons uh, per minute. And the heart attacks, one of the fascinating things as I was preparing for the show is that they're most common in the morning, particularly Monday morning. And we have miles of blood vessels associated with heart, 60,000 miles of blood vessels. And some capillaries are about the size of human, human hairs. So a couple things that are really important for the heart. If you have a heart problem, one of the best treatments that you can do is laughter. Also, Sleep channeling, stress, and having a stress outlet. Um, heart and love. No one why the why the heart is so associated with love, but literally you can die from a broken heart, and it can feel exactly like a heart attack. Some of the common heart conditions they have: high blood pressure, which is is obviously very very apparent in society or, or very talked about in society. But guess what? Low blood pressure is no cakewalk either. Coronary artery disease, when we get these buildup around the vessels that are supplying energy, nutrition, and oxygen to the heart. There's a heart rhythm problem, uh, atrial fibrillation. There's congestive heart failure when the, literally the heart starts working too hard and it, it, just like any other muscle, enlarges and then the valves don't fit. And aortic stenosis, when we get a narrowing of the aorta, all of those conditions affect the most important muscle in the body. And high blood pressure and low blood pressure are really significant. Like a high blood pressure is like you're revving an engine too much. Low blood pressure is there's not enough output. You feel fatigue, lethargic, worn out, worn out. And then coronary artery disease is when you get blood vessels that supply your heart becomes damaged or disease. That out of rhythm feeling where you just have too much heart breathing, excuse me, heart beating, and it beats chaotically or regularly. It's out of sync with the lower chambers of the heart. And when things don't work very well in the heart, what happens is it affects everything. And people will come in and say, hey, I don't know exactly what's wrong, but I have an impending sense of disease. Now, one of the things that we can do to put the heart back in order, and I'm just going to try and talk from least invasive to most invasive, and, and I'm going to talk to most invasive right up to where you go see a heart specialist. So let's talk about this. Water and hydration are so important for health. One of my favorite books is Your Body's Many Cries for Water by Dr. Batman J.D., who was an Iranian doctor that got thrown into prison when there was a political upheaval, and he literally had schedule, light, and water to treat patients. And one of the things that he found out was an enormous impact, so much more important than we give credence for, is having enough water in the system. Again, having a sleep sanctuary, having healthy and alive foods, and channeling your stress. 
there's also a medical assessment and checking out cardiac rehab before the before it starts but when before heart problems start prescription therapy and surgical considerations and i'm going to stay on the preventative medicine page and talk about why taking magnesium and personally about 600 milligrams taking vitamin d3 this is what i found to be a good dosage about 10,000 units and having four to 6,000 milligrams of essential fatty acids for me feels like my heart works really, really well. Some advanced nutritional therapies for hearts that I love to help people, particularly with heart irregularities, is vitamin B number four. You know, people always talk about vitamin B5 and B6 and folic acid and B12, but vitamin B4 is really your heart rhythm. It's a cofactor for the B vitamin complex, which we estimate there's about 30 different types of B vitamins and B vitamin cofactors. And vitamin B number four acts literally like a nutritional pacemaker. This is a beef lipid, lipid extract. It's an advanced nutritional process. And I have seen, I put people on acoustical cardiograms where you can see heart rhythm and they have difficulties regulating blood pressure lying down and standing up and we're going to come to that description in just a minute what i've called raglan's test and what raglan's test does is you take your blood pressure lying down ideally you're going to give around 120 over 80 give or take and your pulse rate should be ideally somewhere between 60 and 90 and then you get a resting heart rate then you stand up as soon as you stand up your blood pressure should increase so that the blood doesn't run out of your head. This is under control of the adrenal glands, and your heart rate should literally stay the same. So 120 over 80 lying down with a pulse rate of 60. When you stand up, a perfect functioning heart should be about 126 over 86 with a pulse rate of 60. So many times people have cardiac and adrenal compensation with what happens is their blood pressure is normal lying down, and then they stand up, the heart's tired or it's not getting input from the adrenal glands. And so what happens is their pulse rate goes up enormously. And if it goes up over 30 beats, we start calling it postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which means if your movement changes, your body has to regulate. And you start really cranking out the heart rate, which is an uncomfortable feeling. And vitamin B number four is really helpful for that. There's also a desiccated beef liver beef sorry beef heart extract that you can take heart muscle and and, and in form of a supplement and it has some proteomorphogen therapies in it proteomorphogen is a dna blueprint for the organs to repair now this is what i learned through all my advanced nutritional work and the two doctoral programs it's not something that is really i guess accepted in the big pharma world but man, does it have a lot of nice effects. If you start looking at any of the deep nutrition or the carnivore diet, or you start looking at, at some of these examinations into organ meat and health, I think there's some, some really good viewpoints that say, you know, we probably should not be eating all of the skeletal muscle. We should be eating the organ muscle. We should be eating liver. We should be eating kidneys. We should be eating heart because there's so many of those uh, DNA extracts, protomorphogen therapy, and then there's something in there called lipotrophic B vitamins. So what are lipotrophic B vitamins? They're fat-loving B vitamins, and what they do is they help to relax the, the nerves that control blood vessels. This is such an important part of naturally managing blood pressure and looking about how we can therapeutically treat the heart and then the last natural thing I wanted everybody to be aware of is to look at nitrous oxide healing factor. You know, what nitrous oxide healing factor is, it uh, really helps to get that whole nitrous oxide pathway. And it's one of the most important things that I've read on the treatment of your cardiovascular system. Now, I've thrown a lot at you guys. If you'd like additional information, head over to America's Healer and take our assessment. You can pick up our book there called Why We Get Sick and What to Do About It. And I'm also going to put it in the show notes. You can, you can send us an email. Reach out to the office, info at West Clinic Online. That's the institution that I work at. You can also uh, do a comment in the Facebook Live, the YouTube, 
and any places where we're running the replay, and I'll do my best to pick up those those uh, comments. But really, if you'd like some information, check us out. Info at West Clinic Online is our email for show notes. Now, there's some other considerations for heart problems that I'd like everybody to be aware of. And again, this is a natural, non-invasive perspective. If you have advanced heart conditions, obviously you want a cardiologist involved. Matter of fact, one of the people I'm trying to get on our show, and it's just been a scheduling thing, is one of the sharpest cardiologists around. I'm, I'm excited to, to have him on, on the show and talk about what you can do from an interventional cardiology standpoint. Also, you know, what's the deal about stents and statins? And we want to talk about uh, nitrous oxide. We want to talk about niacin. And I want to talk about thiamine and also some cutting-edge prescriptive therapy. So that's going to be coming up in a future show. Considerations for natural heart things before we need to get into the heart system. This is when your heart's acting up. It doesn't feel right. The timing's off. Maybe you've gone through a cardio conversion and you want don't want to have to have additional invasive things. Acupuncture is I've seen some really good outcomes since and see that calm down the heart. Neural therapy is an advanced German and European treatment where we take advanced acupuncture therapies over the heart and different acupuncture meridians, very, very superficial. It's like a modified acupuncture treatment with a glycolyzed ester of paraminobenzoic acid. And what it does is it makes the nerves that come out basically from the nervous system go through the organs and tissues to the skin. When you treat the skin over those areas, it has a reciprocal innervation effect on the organs and the muscles, and it resets the nervous system. We call this hyperpolarization, depolarization, repolarization of the nervous system. It's in a, a treatment called neural therapy. And one of my favorite preventative medicine treatments is to use a protein molecule surrounded by vinegar molecules and spray and clean the body. And what do we call that? We call that chelation therapy. Oxidative medicine, if you aren't getting enough oxygen in the system, things aren't working very well. And so looking at those resources that are available head over to, to americashealer.com, look at our evaluation, look at our the books that we have over there, the Sleeping Sanctuary. Now, when I started this segment, we were going to talk about what to do for heart, what to talk about for the stomach, what we we're going to do for vertigo, and how we are going to combine all that together in overall being healthy. And I got so excited about talking about hearts that I, my producers tell me we only have about 90 seconds left. So let me just kind of recap that, and then we're going to pick up heart. Um, we're going to finish off the, the heart segment, stomach, lungs, and vertigo in our next segment next week. But what you can do for your heart, it's the most important muscle in the body. Please be aware of vitamin B number four. It acts like a nutritional uh, pacemaker. You can pick that up in personalized nx.com. It's in a product called Vitamin B Supreme. You also want to know about nitrous oxide healer factor, NOx. It has an amazing effect on oxygenating the heart, but also naturally reducing blood pressure. Vitamin D3, particularly in the liquid uh, form, is a wonderful thing for moods, emotions. I've seen it do great things for blood pressure and then lipotrophic B vitamins, which are fat-loving B vitamins that relax the nervous system that controls the blood vessel. All of those are talked about at personalizednx.com. That's where you can get the products. It's one of the sponsors of the show. It's something that I've been using for years. This is America's Healer with Dr. Jason West. We're coming at you every Friday at 1 o'clock. If you have questions if you need some information about something that I said in the show, or if you have a show topic, please send me an email at info at westcliniconline.com. And we will see you guys next Friday at one o'clock. Dr. Jason West, here's to your energy, balance, and longevity. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. America's healer, Dr. Jason West, will be back next week to share more of his expertise. So don't miss it. Until then, have a great week.